Now that I have covered enough ground about the classes, it's a good time to move on and talk about the structures. But the things about the classes are not yet over. We need to talk a little bit more about them. So how does a class look like? We all know that how we can define functions inside the class, outside the class, define some variables or simply saying properties and methods. So this is how a typical class look like. But the big difference between the classes and structure is, first of all, surprisingly, all the variables or the data types that you have used, like for example, integers, booleans, strings, dictionaries, arrays, all of them are implemented as structures in the Swift. This is really a surprise point. And people coming from other languages will be saying, hey, strings are not uh, classes out there in the string, in the Swift, what we are going to do that. But believe me, they are even more powerful in the Swift. Equivalent power for some other languages, and even in more in some of the language cases. So yes, all of the data types are implemented as structures, but this doesn't mean you have to go back and look around all of them. Yes, because the exact, the high implementation of the similarities between the class and the structures save that a lot of mess. The important point that you should be taking care is that structures are passed by values and classes are passed by reference. And wherever you are coming from any language, it's a good chance that you might have already got this hurdle out there. And you might be thinking, what is about the function, what the value is being passed, and uh, is there a change when we pass a value inside the function, the change is going to be remain there or it's just a on the go change. So for this, let's try an example out here. So we got a pass by value. Now, whenever you are defining a structure that simply says that we have got a pass by value, that means the change that you have implemented is not going to be permanent out there. It's going to be momentarily changed. But when we implement the things as a classes, that means that whenever we pass things inside a function, a reference to the actual object is being passed and the changes, whatever you are going to make are going to be subsequent and permanent out there. So we have got a class out there that says account and it has got a balance. And obviously in the balance, I want to add the simple interest out there. And here is a function defined outside the class and saying there is an interest adder function. You need to implement that. And this interest adder function accepts an object from the account class and returns a data type of integer. Quite simple. And we can easily visualize that and can see that. So we have got an object dot balance is being added by 10. So the $22 and the $10 is being added as interest. Now quite a high interest we have got. And we got a return of object dot balance. Okay, quite good, quite easy. Now later on, we are creating a new variable from the or simply saying new object from the class account and we access the property of balance before accessing the function and after accessing the function. Now, it doesn't make sense right now. I know that I understand that, but bear with me in a moment. And we got a balance that is 22. Now we got an interest adder. It makes a 32 and the balance is 32. Quite obvious, quite good, but that is not the case of the structure. And since all the data type are being implemented as the structure, and if you don't create any classes out there and whenever you pass any value inside the function, that means you are passing as an simple value. Okay, how to define a structure? The important question. Now just double click on the class and name it as struct. And that's it. That's what you have done. So that is why people like to compare the classes and structure because they have got immense similarity out there. And you can see the only thing that got changed is in the result. Previously it was 32, but now it is 22. Now this is the reason why we say that whenever an object is being passed inside a function, and if it is a structure, everything is going to be passed as a copy and whatever the change you make inside a copy, it is not going to affect the original value. Quite interesting out there. So we have done this. But apart from that, there is no change out there in the structure. We can use the same method or same syntax to create an object from the structure. We can have the dot property to access the properties and the methods and all of that. But there is a subsequent change. Let me show you that. Now, whenever you define a new object, let's say let's define some new object. Uh, let's just say it is some object. And this time I am defining an object from the structure class. So when I put my first bracket, notice 
that it gives me an initializer automatically that is first one without any parameters being passed on but there is also a second option that says that there are two properties that you might want to set because this is a structure now and it says you can set your balance and you can set your string value as well quite interesting and easy as well so this was all about the structure that we have i know this is a bizarre example but i wanted to prove my point about what we need to focus right now quite good quite interesting but that doesn't mean we have talked all about the structure and all about the classes we have covered the enough ground about the classes and structure now that we can discuss about the properties methods and some related stuff so let's go ahead and move on to that